Don't film outside, guys. Just don't do it. <laughs> I'm Naomi, I'm a singer who sews, and I need to rehem a kirtle, so I thought this would be a good time to chat with you about why I picked the name I picked for my channel and what I hope to accomplish in the future. First things first, I gotta rip out all these yards and yards of hem. Escamillo thinks he's helping. Since it's just a whip stitch, it's super duper easy. Before I can trim and rehem, I really need to iron out all those old creases too. I'm finding it easier to iron the silk and linen separately. Let this be a cautionary tale. Always hang your hems for at least 24 hours before you hem them up. Now that I've got it all unhemmed, I'm gonna hang my dress overnight. Here you can see my beautiful hanging solution. Hang the dress in the shower because it's the only place in your house tall enough to accommodate the train. Because I flatlined this dress, it's got two wibbly wobbly layers in there, and I don't want them to slide around, so I'm just going to baste about an inch above where I want the hem to be while the dress is hanging. I'm doing a double fold hem, which means that the inside layer will be a little bit shorter than the outside layer, and I want to make sure I trim correctly. Since I've already worn this kirtle out and about, you can see I've got a little dirt line telling me where the bottom of the hem used to be. So I'm just going to press up along that before I trim to get my hem even all the way around. I really hope that I can get some of this road noise out of this video. <laughs> If not, I apologize for the audio quality. I'm literally filming this from my phone. Eventually I'll get more equipment uh, once I feel like I have more of a following and can spend some money on that. I'm just doing a simple two-turn hem. At some point I hope to bind the hem in wool tape or something, but I don't have the materials for that right now. I made this kirtle as the base layer for a medieval Mother Christmas, but it's also going to be the base layer for a big project I have in mind. That brings me to my channel. The name of my channel is The Singer Sews, right? If you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you might know I'm a classically trained soprano. It has been a constant source of frustration to me that classical radio stations hardly ever played vocal music. And I love vocal music. I went to school for six years to study singing. I just really want to educate more people about vocal music. Now, I love sewing, and sewing is my primary hobby because singing is my job. So I wanted to start this channel because I had a big project in mind. I have named this project Vox Vestitus, which means the voice dressed up in Latin. And it's going to be a series exploring music history and how it relates to dress history. We, as a costume world, know quite a bit about what silhouettes and clothes of the past looked like, but I'm also really interested in what life was like for normal people. As at least an American society, we pretty much universally know certain tunes, and I want to explore what those tunes were 700 years ago. So for the first installation of Vox Vestitus, I'd like to make a full costume inspired by this costume in the Très Riches Heures de Jean Duc de Berry. <laughs> My French is terrible. The translation for that is the Very Rich Book of Hours of Jean Duc of Berry. And I am obsessed with all of the clothes in it, especially this one. I'll have like beautiful aesthetic videos of sewing, but then I'm also going to go into music theory and music history and kind of explore what it sounded like at that time in the court of John the Duke of Berry in France. So that would be early 15th century music, probably some leftovers from the 14th century. There's some really excellent music by Guillaume Machot that I would love to present to you. Once things start opening up again, now that more and more people are getting vaccinated, I'm hoping that I can start collaborating with some musicians from the SCA and make my own recordings because 
As Liz Scapism talked about in one of her videos, music licensing is like a big mess. It's a big old mess. Even though all of this 15th century music has been in the public domain for like ever, the recordings of 15th century music aren't in the public domain. I don't know when exactly I will be getting these videos out, but like I said, I hope to start working on recordings sometime this year. The most frustrating thing for me right now is that I can make the costumes by myself, but I need other musicians to make these recordings and do them justice. But yeah, I want to expose more people to the wonderful world of classical vocal music from every era, and I'm starting with medieval music. If that sounds interesting to you, you should follow this channel and look for updates about that. Click the little bell icon if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. Like and comment so that this video can be picked up by the algorithm. And expect music content alongside the sewing content so I can live up to my name, The Singer Sews.